Mel Stry joining us for the government this morning, Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. Always great to see you. Thanks for taking the time. You're here to tell us about a rise to the state pension. Reading in the paper this morning that three quarters of that will be swallowed up by extra taxes. So, well, let, let's firstly talk about the rise. So, an 8.5% increase in the state pension as of today. That's £900 more uh, on the state pension. And bear in mind, Kay, of course, that comes on top of the 10.1% increase that we had a year ago and inflation of course has fallen now because of our sticking to our plan we've got it down to 3.4 percent so a very substantial uh, increase uh, in terms of tax i think there are many uh, parts to this one of them is for example that the personal allowance which is the amount of tax uh, income that you can receive without paying any tax at all has been increased under this government very substantially doubled in fact since 2010 and that means that if you're relying on the state pension alone of course you're not going to be paying any tax at all. When will the legal advice given to the government on the legality of war in Gaza be published? Well, it's a very long-standing convention with very good reasons as to why it's this way, that when it comes to uh, that advice and within that context, the uh, providing or otherwise of licences for arms sales, for example, that that uh, advice is not published. So um, the answer to your question is that as under governments of all political stripes and colours, uh, that advice will not be made public. You published the summary of the legal advice received on the airstrikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen. Why not the legality of war in Gaza? Well, they're two different situations. So, on the one hand, you've got a process that is entered into uh, on an ongoing basis to assess whether uh, licences should be provided for the export of, of arms. Uh, in the case of the, the Houthi uh, action, of course, that was a direct military involvement by our country, which is a very different situation it was you're quite right not the full legal advice that was provided at that time but a summary of that advice yeah. but they are very different situations okay well let me put it this way 600 plus legal brains say mm. the government is breaching international law by continuing to arm israel why are you not listening to them well there is a very clear process around providing uh, arms to israel and we're a very small provider actually of uh, military support but no well you're you're right the principle is is very much still there and that is constantly being reviewed now the requirements for that process come out of a 2002 act of parliament which is very precise very robust we have one of the most robust processes for determining whether we should grant those licences in our country. One of the so most robust anywhere in the world. No, no, no. Uh, so the, the, the process is that the Foreign Secretary and the Foreign Office will be uh, assessing exactly those uh, issues, taking that legal advice that you've uh, referred to, and then, uh, as a consequence of that, advising one way or the other okay. the business secretary as to whether a licence should be provided. Should it be lawyers or politicians who decide whether laws have been broken? Well, it, uh, clearly, uh, when it comes to whether there has been breach in the law, there is uh, legal advice that is provided, and I explained how that fits uh, within the process. But ultimately, the decisions, of course, has, have to be taken by uh, elected uh, politicians. Alicia Kearns, chairman of the Foreign Affairs Select Committee, uh, recorded as saying Israel is breaking international law. Why is she wrong? Well, neither, with great respect to uh, Alicia, who I respect a, a great deal, incidentally, at the end of the day, uh, I haven't seen the legal advice, but the process is very clear that it is for the Foreign Secretary to uh, consider that advice and then make a recommendation to the Business Secretary as to whether uh, an arms licensing should still uh, continue. And that is an ongoing process, and that, that involves a lot of evidence uh, that is collected. Okay. It also uh, allows, for example, the uh, Israeli government to comment on... Uh, the advice that is being given, is, all the decisions that may or may not be taken. Is this government comfortable arming a country that is responsible for the death of British aid workers? Look, we have made it extremely clear, and the Prime Minister has spoken so yes personally. No, um, look, we, we are deeply uncomfortable. Uh, in fact, really appalled by what happened about a week ago no, when it came to the... No, that's not question, Minister, uh, with respect. Yeah. Are, is this government comfortable arming a country that is responsible, directly responsible, for the death of British aid workers? We have, I think, a duty to support Israel in the sense that that's a yes. that country... Well, let me just finish, because it's an important answer. It here. is. It, it, it's important that we support them, given particularly what happened, and we forget this too readily, on the 7th of October. I will come that, to that. that terrible, terrible, I'm asking you shocking about British aid workers. situation. I'm asking and, you about and British Israel, aid workers. No, is, Israel is an ally. Israel has a right to defend itself. It has a right to tackle Hamas. Hamas, which is a terrorist organisation, which is? is still today saying it would go back and do exactly the it's kind of thing that it did back in October. It's a terrorist organisation that's carried out heinous 
barbaric which acts is complete... on a number of occasions. Yes. We're not supporting them. So we, we are, are supporting we are an ally Israel. My and question supportive. is, is this government comfortable arming a country that is responsible for the death okay. of British aid workers? Okay. We are very uncomfortable with what happened. We are appalled with what happened. Our Prime Minister has spoken to the Israeli Prime Minister uh, about that. We are also very uncomfortable about uh, the amount of aid that's getting into Israel, which is why we've been working very hard to increase that. We've had some success with uh, commitment now from Israel to open the areas crossing up in the north of Gaza and also to allow Ashdod to, as a port, to be bringing aid in uh, as well. Yes. But of course we're concerned. But we're equally we're concerned about the hostages that Hamas is holding. So as it's indeed, right that we stand by our allies and friends. Months. But it, okay, this is the important point. It's no, also no, right. It's, it's also all right. important, Mr. Stride. <laughs> okay. The International Court of Justice says there is a case for plausible genocide. Still comfortable supporting Israel? As I'm trying to set out, I think Israel is a very important democratic. Uh, a country that abides by the rule Court of, of justice law says plausible and an ally case that, of that we should be supporting, in particularly in her hour of need and what has happened. However, that is not uh, an, an, an unconditional support. We expect uh, Israel not to do the kind of things that happen with the aid workers, and we have made it very clear that we are appalled by what uh, happened there. We do expect, and the Americans as well and others, that aid will be going into Gaza, where we are beginning to move into a, a famine situation, Lord said, which we're very no, concerned we, that's about. That's not what I'm asking you about so this morning, it has to be Mr. a balanced Stride, approach. If I may. Lord Sedwell, former Cabinet Secretary and National Security Advisor, urged ministers to clarify the legal advice given to this government. Why are you not listening to him? Well, as I say, this is back to your questions about uh, the licensing and the process and so on that we discussed earlier. He knows all there of is that. A, there He's is a, a long standing. There's a long, long standing convention under governments of all colours. He knows all of that. That well, well, he He's may the and he may. Secretary. But but Kay, he, he has a different view, and I uh, to me, and he has a different view to many other people. But I um, you know, we're all entitled to our own view. But it, uh, I happen to disagree with him. I, Shadow I think Foreign that, uh, Secretary. Let me well, tell you about him. Yes, he well, says there's plausible evidence that the threshold for suspending arms licences has been crossed. Is he wrong? Well, we're talking here about whether the legal advice that's being provided uh, through the Foreign Office should be made public or not. And as I've tried to explain, there's a long, long convention under governments of all different colours that that advice is not made public. And I think that's right and proper. But that's not the same thing as saying that there isn't a very thorough process that has gone through, one of the most robust in the world, and coming out of statute, a legal act of Parliament 2002, oh, that makes sure that Minister. we go through the right processes. Shadow Foreign right Secretary decisions. says there's plausible evidence that the threshold for suspending arms licences has been crossed. Is he wrong? The current situation, and I'm not the Foreign Secretary, and I'm not privy to the advice, so it's slightly unrealistic for me to have a very clear answer. You're representing on this. the government this morning. But I am. And therefore, and what I'm very clearly saying is that there is a very clear process. And as things stand right at this particular moment in time, at this particular moment in time, the advice, as I understand it, from the Foreign Secretary to the Business Secretary, is that there shouldn't be any change in the current arrangement. Don't you think the British that's, public That's should what know I know. What at advice this is time. being given to the government on their so, behalf? Sorry, sorry. Don't you again. think the British, the British people should know what advice is being given to the government on their behalf? Well, well, as I say, not all legal advice in, in the public sphere is always made public, and there are many good reasons why that's not the case. And those reasons in this particular case have persisted not just under Even this when government, three but men under who other governments. Their country were killed yes. by the Israelis. And that is why the Prime Minister had a very uh, serious conversation with the Israeli Prime Minister about exactly that. It's why the IDF, for example, have suspended two senior members of the IDF. They have accepted that something went very wrong. Uh, in that case, and it is unacceptable, and we have unequivocally made that clear. We are also concerned about the amount of aid going into I know. Uh, Gaza, and we are also concerned about the number of civilian losses that there have been and uh, in Gaza. And we're concerned about the hostages so, as well. Of and we're concerned we about the hostages, and we're very concerned but about Hamas. But that doesn't mean that the British get... people so shouldn't therefore... know whether it's legal what Israel is doing at the moment, and we are continuing to arm So, them. so, so there, there, there is a process. There are two things here. One is you're saying to me, well, look, the legal advice should be made public, and I think I've dealt with well, that. Well, not I've just me. I've, I've listed but a litany of people But there's also the issue as to whether the granting of these licences is legal or otherwise. And what I'm saying is there's a very clear, robust process, one of the most thorough in the entire world, 
that is gone through. It involves the Foreign Secretary, the well, Foreign Office and the Business it. Department. Well the, 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 well, the process, of course, is very well known and understood and it's contained Why within the, the 2002 Why can't we know what the advice is? Well, you're coming back the to the advice. top liberal brains are saying that they should. The, for, the Shadow Foreign Secretary says we should. Uh, former Cabinet Secretary says we should. Why are uh, they but, all wrong uh, uh, because, and this government is well, wrong? Well, to pray in aid, I would say that, 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 that all governments of all colours, uh, certainly since the 2002 Act, have not taken that view. So it's not just been the Conservatives in office, it's been Labour in office as well, have taken the view that that should not be and if and made public. In office, we'll and part of, the reason, part of the reason for that, Kay, is that what you want when it comes to legal advice is very frank, sometimes brutal uh, legal advice that's very clear. And you don't want to constrain that by having the additional element of okay. it being uh, debated Final in the public Final question. We're public out of time. Sphere. The Deputy Prime yeah. Minister says haters are relishing Israel's mistakes. Is he right? I think what we need to do is to really focus on the end point here, which is getting to a peaceful solution to all of this. Answer my question, We've please. got to... Well, is, sorry, whether, whether people are, are relishing... He says that haters are relishing Israel's mistakes. There, there, are people that have, right? there are people that have strong opinions about all aspects of what's happening in this terrible tragedy uh, of Gaza. So people will have all sorts of views about Israel's actions or Hamas's well, actions and so on. So, uh, so, so on. So, well I, well, I think I am. I'm, I'm accepting the fact that people have all sorts of different views about the situation. What matters now, and what we have pushed for, is a temporary ceasefire to allow aid in so that we can open up to uh, 500 trucks a day, which is what we need for aid. We need to expand the kind of aid we're getting, including fuel for bakeries and powering up hospitals and, and so on. And getting the hostages home. And yes. getting the hostages home. We must leave home. it there. Um, yeah. We've overrun and I'm going to be in trouble. So okay. See you as always. Thank you very nice much indeed.